Hi, Eva here. Today I thought we'll paint a fun little project painting some snowbells in watercolor and we're going to start with masking them out. I think this is a wonderful little exercise actually in painting white. And it, since it's not so involved, you know, we have time to do it in our little time slot here. And when they come up through the ground, first they're like these little white things that are pushing up and then, you know, they grow up and then they turn and then they open. And they really are, they usually come in around February and sometimes they can even come a little bit earlier in Denmark where if it's a, you know, a mild winter. And they will literally poke up through the snow if, uh, if there's snow on the ground, which it's not always the case. So, as you can see, mine is dry, and I splattered on a little bit of masking fluid, and I mixed some colors here. I mixed cobalt blue. I mixed a little bit of the opera rose, and but I mean, whatever color you want, you could just go with the cobalt blue. Um, and I also have some French ultramarine blue here because that'll go a little bit darker and I put a little bit of burnt sienna out because I'm thinking I might want to gray down the background a little bit because mm. if I want to say it's snowing and stuff, you know, I don't want the background to be too bright because mm. I want to say it's kind of a wintry day. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing that I did on this one, which I should push aside so I don't splatter on it. Um, I'm going to wet, I'm not going to wet the whole thing as a matter of fact. I'm going to put, I'm going to leave the bottom a little bit dry, not a little bit dry, I'm going to leave it dry. I'm going to try and say that there is a, there's a, you know, a, um, can, can you, you see, see Heidi? There. Oh, Heidi, can you see? Yeah, let's Heidi get in so you she can see, yeah. yeah. Um, so let me just get... So I'm leaving the bottom dry and I'll hold it up so you can see what I'm doing and so I can see what I'm doing because I literally can't see what I'm doing. Um, can you see I put lots of water on the background here and I left the bottom part dry mm -hmm. and I didn't do it like a real straight line because I'm thinking there's like it's a little snow bank right and so that snow bank will go up a little bit behind the flowers and then you know I'm gonna have background kind of bluish colors and you'll see it much much better once I put color on because then we can all see where how far I got that down so I'm just going to start with a little bit of the Are you cobalt recording this right now? yes oh. I am recording it oh, good. yes thank you everybody's <laughs> helping me out here <laughs> which I need all the help I can get so you can see I'm just putting a little bit of the cobalt in cobalt is such a forgiving color so if I'm kind of trying to figure out what's going on. I use, and I have that in my one of my color choices. That's typically the one I start with because, you know, it's very forgiving. If I got it in a place where I didn't want it, I could easily lift it out. But now we can already see a little bit better what, what I have planned here. Um, so I'm going to put some French ultramarine in also. Because I want it a little darker because, you know, I do want kind of a darker background because otherwise, if I kept the background super light, yeah. those little uh, snowbells, they wouldn't really show up much, would they? Um, so I can even put, I'm going to put a little bit of the opera rose in. What's another and, name for opera rose? Pardon me? Another name for opera uh, rose. Opera rose is, an, is the name, uh, oh, any of the, uh, you know, permanent rose. Okay. Quinacridone rose, any of those oh, pinkish I have, I have red. A twin. Okay. That's yeah, okay. yeah, that's that's that'll do it. How about red? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. You can to put red in, and uh, you know the red and the and the blue when they mix, they actually that's that's how you make uh, pinks is put a little bit of blue in a red. So you can totally make your own. So can you see how now it's? Mm -hmm. I like that color. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna gray it down a little tiny bit. So that's why I put some of the. Um, burnt sienna on my palette because then I can take some of the French ultramarine blue and if I put not very much because I'm not pa painting uh -huh. dirty snow if I can help it. 
But can you see how that grayed the blue mm -hmm. down a little bit? That's with French ultramarine and burnt sienna. Burnt sienna, yeah, and French, French ultramarine. ultramarine. And you can also do the same with a cobalt and a burnt sienna, cobalt. only it doesn't go quite as dark. So I'm trying to uh, get a little bit of darker color in there. Go back in to get a little bit of the cobalt on. Just want to make sure I have some of this down. And so now I'm just going to go in and make it not so straight. And I want to make sure I have some of that darker background down behind all of my little flower heads. That's kind of my goal. And here's this little. So that way we can already see that there's a little, a little snow thing magic going on. I'll pull it down a little bit there. And now I should probably start thinking about stopping messing around with it too much because once it starts drying, you really don't want to keep messing with it. I would like, and that's what I'm trying to do here, is I would like to have one of the sides, like here, a little bit darker than the other because that way, you know, I can kind of create where the light is coming from so then it'll be coming from there, right? If I have this side a little bit darker, there. And then later I can cast some shadows this way, over the snow. There we have it. Oh, one more thing. I forgot. I wanted to throw... If you can kind of push it my way, yeah, thanks. I wanted to throw some salt in because, you know, if I want some snow action, salt is... This one is a little bit coarser. So I think the other times we use show, uh, snow, uh, salt, we, uh, we use the finer salt. So now I have one that's a little bit coarser. It's not super coarse. Uh, in between. So let's try that out. And you can try, I have both kinds. So you can try whatever you want. So there. There we have it. That's kind of fun. And then we'll see. You know how it is with salt. We never know what's going to happen until later. Mm -hmm. So that's your step two on that one. What we're going to do is we're going to pick up with a little bit of that mixture of snow shadow color which is cobalt blue and opera rose and i'm going to pick up and put a little bit of that color right where these um petals and the flowers and their leaves are coming out of the snow and then i'm going to lose the edge behind to kind of say you know that's that little indentation in the snow that they are and this one looks a little too straight snow is not straight like that so i want to go down a little bit there um and then lose the edge so i have a hard edge in front because that's a snow bank it's cast you know it's it's catching some light um and so there we have those i think this is pretty okay I just don't want anything too hard edged behind here. I just want it to kind of... So that's just a damp brush? That's a da just a damp brush. And then uh, let's go in and let's uh, continue this a little bit because, you know, yeah. some little um, more snow banks. You know, snow is not like super flat. So let's go in and I... So I put a little bit of that shadow color and now I'm just losing the edge and can you see how now I'm creating a snowbank in front of here mm -hmm. yeah. so that worked out and then let's create another little snowbank here why not it's our painting we can do what we want and so now I want to go down and do it like this just to vary it a little bit and lose the edge a couple bit can you see how it's already beginning and then maybe there's a little indentation here so think about dark pushes down, light brings forward. And um, I want to get a little bit here, maybe like that. And again, I, I always lose the edge. I don't I wouldn't leave it like that. Lose the edge. Lose the edge. Eva, I got 10 of those on order. Oh, are you the they're best? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much. So they're, Thank you. they're coming to Nevada Fine Arts. <laughs> so, yeah. That's that masking pen. 
And so here I want to maybe darken a little bit more, saying there's a little bit more of an undulation. So anywhere where it goes dark like this, you can see there's a dip in the snow. Can you tell? Mm -hmm. And so now that whole foreground is kind of broken up. It's not flat anymore. And uh, here I have what I call a ghost line. Can you see here? Because mm -hmm. I didn't stop. You know, I, I, I stopped with the water and then there was more pigment. So there's white and then a, a hard edge. I, I'm not crazy about ghost lines. Luckily, I'm using that very forgiving color called cobalt, which I can just smudge out and kind of get rid of that. And then another thing I like to do is I like to kind of push you into the painting by putting a little bit of a darker, a little bit of that shadow color down here in the corners. I feel, I don't know, it's it's a visual thing. And I to me, it kind of helps me push my eyes back into the painting where I want you to look. I don't really like my corners here on this kind of stuff to be too light. But of course, I don't want it too dark, but of course, I want it to read like snow. But can you see, does that, mm -hmm. can you see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. It kind of pushes you back into the painting again when I put a little bit of that shadow color there. It's kind of like pushes you in there. Um, so I want to do the same thing here. So I should put a little bit more of the color on. So a little bit more here. can even be a little darker there because it's uh, away from the light since the light's coming from there. But there's not that much light. So the shadows won't be really hard on this. Of course, you know, I have snow coming and it's so it's kind of a little bit gray. And so I'm just trying to not have anything hard edged here. So go all the way out there. There. And I also don't want these snow banks to be the widest part of the painting because that's for my snow bells. If I have everything, um, you know, white, then, you know, the snow bells are going to kind of lose their star status. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, that's pretty okay for now mm -hmm. anyway. We can always doctor it up a little bit more if we need to. Can you hold it up? Yes, Thanks. I can hold it up. Thank you. Can you? Mm, so now there's something going on in the foreground. It does say that it's snow, I feel, and uh, it's, but it's not taking over. It's not being too interesting. So there we have that. And then I can't rub off the masking fluid down there just yet because it's wet. However, I can rub off the snow up here, and I can also rub off the masking fluid up here. I'm just gonna rub off this, uh, the snow, the salt, and and also those little. Um, I'm gonna use. Oops, I'm going to use my um, rubber cement eraser, which I had a little piece somewhere. I use the kneaded erasers. Is it okay to use and that? What, the kneaded is not very good for this, and, the, and this uh, masking um, that oh. you rub off, you kind of get stuck in the kneaded eraser, but if it works for you, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. So here, I'm going to rub off the masking fluid up here where it's dry, not down there yet. But if I can just get it off the flowers, I can start painting those and then I'm going to paint in the green parts later. Yeah. Masking fluid picker up by, I don't I'm know, picker. rubber cement erases what they're called. No, because it's too soft. Here, no. this is more hard no, rubber. So. And I can see with the masking fluid that I got on here for a little snow, uh, little snowflakes, I kind of feel I would like a little bit more. So that's, you know, I'll probably sprinkle on a little bit of white paint when I'm all done to kind of get it a little bit more. But And I didn't get that much salt action, but I got enough. It, it, it looks snowy. That's what I think. It looks snowy. All right. So... Then we have these little white flowers. What do we do with white flowers? You can see if I left them like this, they're going to look very flat, right? That's not going to look very good. So let me show you. So the, on the um, snow bells, I don't know if you can really see here. On here, you can see it a little bit. I feel that those, you can see 
this is a painting of you know white snow white snow bells and there's a lot of different colors so white is not you know if you, I isolated this it wouldn't look white uh, and so we need to get a little shadow color to divide these little guys and I'm thinking I might need a little bit of a smaller brush so I might go with the, maybe this one and this one so this is a number six and a number four and they have decent tips on them and I find that on snow bells usually I do Co uh, the shadow color on, on white, I often do that um, kind of lavenderish, bluish color. But on the snow bells, I actually find that a very springy green is the ideal little bit of a shadow color because they do have a little bit of green in them. They have these little funny things in the mm -hmm. inside. And I do find that if you look at some of the shadow, even in this photograph here, have a little greenish tint to them. So that's what I have done in the past. So then I just talk to myself and try to, so here is that little petal that's in the middle here. And I want to say it's behind that one. What color is that? So this is that cobalt blue with a little tiny bit of yellow in. Blue, yeah. yeah. And then I'm just going to pull that color out so there's like there. Can you see now that this mm -hmm. is behind that? I pushed it back a little bit and if I got too much color on, I can just right away dab it. Can you see now already it's kind of split up a little bit? So that's good. And then uh, let's see here. I'll put a little tiny bit of that color on maybe on this side of this one. Dab out my brush and lose the edge inside the petal. Can you kind of see how it gives it, it still looks white, but <coughs> it gives it a little bit of character. <coughs> and so one, I think I actually needed to probably darken here even a little tiny bit more right in that corner. And then rinse it out, lose the edge, just to give it a little bit more there, dimension. Can you see how it gives a dimension when you do that? Mm -hmm. mm. And I, I think I, so if the light's coming from here, it's gonna hit this side of this petal. So I should put a little tiny bit of that shadow color right underneath, like right here, just a little bit. I don't want to lose the feeling that it's a white flower, but I do need to put a little bit of shadow on it to um, to give it dimension like that. And then right now it might still look like a little yellow greenish, but once you start putting on a little bit, so I'm using that same color combination, transparent yellow and um, the uh, transparent yellow and the cobalt blue and for my green but now you know this part of it is of course a little bit darker so I'm just going in and putting a little bit of that green on away from the light and then again I dab out my brush and I pull that color in start painting that little hat it has I like to do a little bit of a brighter green on here and I can you know push and pull it Put a little bit more of the blue here, away from the light, just to give it a little shape. There. There's that. So can you see how that uh, creates a nice little uh, flower? I'm gonna have to wait until I can, I can soon rub the masking off. So let's do the little one down here. That'll be kind of fun. And you don't have to use the exact same shadow color I'm going to keep mine in the greenish tint, but here I'm put a little bit more blue in on this one here. So I'm going to put a little bit of that color away from the light <coughs> on that little petal and then clean brush. And before it dries on me, I'm just going to rub it out so that it gets it, gives it a little shape. 
And then on the other one, I'm going to do the same thing just up here. It's going to be a little bit darker. And then I think it's going to be a little darker on this side. It's away from the light. And rinse out my brush and just lose that edge. So it's barely any color. But enough to start giving it a little shape. So I wanted to darken a little bit there just to split them up. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. um, so I think I can do probably the same thing here. Put a little bit of, I think it's dry enough, let's see. Put a little bit of that green color on the little hat here, away from the light. That's where it would be darker, and a little bit here on this edge. And then I rinse it out with a damp brush, no drops on the handle. I pull that color out so it starts getting a little shape, and I need to put a little bit more on this side there, dab in a little bit more. There. Can you see how it gives its shape? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you do the flower heads, and then I'm going to call you back up, and then we're going to do the leaves and the, the stems, and then we're going to kind of take a look and see what we need to. And a little bit of cast shadow, but we're going to see how, how much we can push it. So what I did was I finished painting in a little bit of shadow on all the little flower heads. I didn't paint any more of the hats on other than what you already saw. And so you don't paint necessarily have to paint all the all the little hats. Just well, I'm going to, but yeah. I, you don't oh, have to okay. do it right now. Okay. I'm going to do it together with the with the rest of the stem. And then what I ended up doing was on this one here and on this one here where I'm having the stem run in front off a couple of the petals, not petals, but leaves here. I, I went in and masked it out again, just so I don't have to be careful about that because I want that lighter and brighter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what I decided to do. So let's just... Um, Are you taping? Pardon me? You're taping? Yes, I am. Thank you. No, it's good. I am taping. But I need, uh, I need all the reminders I can get. Uh, so we are going to um, use the same colors again for the leaves. But I do have my, um, I do have some of my clean, let's put some out here, French ultramarine blue here, because I would like to be able to have the possibility of do something a little bit darker. So that's, you know, French ultramarine does that job very nicely and actually I could go in and then mix myself a darker green can you see that nice mm -hmm. dark green so now I have two different ones darker and not quite as dark of course there's more yellow in and then I'm gonna have my usual like really springy green with the cobalt and the uh, transparent yellow so let's see here let's just start out maybe I should start with a bigger one so it's easier for you to see so what I have noticed in these um, little leaves on the snowbells is that they, at least the kind that I have, they have a little bit of a light mm -hmm. kind of stripe down the middle that's a little bit lighter. So I don't know if I can get that in. If I can, great. And if I can't, I can always scrub it out a little bit if I want to be that particular. That's again up to you, certainly don't have to. So what I did was I put a little bit of water down the middle, just because I don't want too uh, hard etched out on the side. So I'm gonna go with some um, of the transparent yellow and some cobalt blue. I'm gonna go for it. That's a nice springy green. I thought you said you're using ultramarine. I am going for the darker ones, but oh, I'm not gonna stack Oh, start I out with the darker ones okay. and so I'm using my liner brush let's see if that works out so down here so I'm going up one side with that light green and then I'm going to try and see if I can go up the other side 
Maybe take some of the water out of it. I don't know. I feel that I have it a little watery, but it'll probably work out just fine. And then I'm going to go up the other side. And they're going to run together most of the places. But if I can get a couple of... Yeah, I am getting that. Can you see I'm getting a couple of areas mm -hmm. where then they, they don't run together. And that's enough for me for right now. I think that'll be great. Because I don't want it like one unbroken line up along those leaves. Because that's going to look a little too... That's a little too perfect. God forbid we get anything per perfect. Can't have that and down here. So can you see by having just a little bit of that going on, it kind of says that we have that lighter area like that. All right, so now I have that light green on. It's a little light for the whole thing. So now I'm gonna dip the tip of my brush, just a tip like here. And I'm kind of rolling it a little bit because I want, certainly wanna make sure that I keep that nice, good tip on my brush. And now it's probably drying a little bit. And if I go out on the outer edge, uh -huh. can you see how it spreads in if I dip that tip with that little bit darker color in? And then it kind of spreads by itself into that lighter green. There. And that way I get a little bit more shape on these. It would be a little darker down here. There. And then like that. And I want a little bit of that darker here and there on that side. And if it's still wet, it'll run a little bit. Awesome. Just like that. I'm being very fiddly with this, actually. You don't have to be that fiddly with it. But there we are. Just drag that out there. I'm good with that one. If I'm good with it, let's carry on. And then um, let's try and do one of these little hats again. So here I have very light green. So light I can barely see it. Kind of want a little bit more than that. I'm having some water issues here. Put a lot of water in. All right. So here again. There. Of course, in watercolor, we don't have to fret about too much about having it too light because that's easy to fix. It's easier to get it dark dark later much easier than trying to get it light later right so there's the hat on this little guy and I could even drag down a little bit like that I like that and see here I gave this one and one of those little little green things you can see of course it only has those three petals and so on this side I have it on the other side and then on this side I have it here just you know variety it's a spice of life. So now I'm going to put a little bit more of the yellow in right here. And here I'm doing it on dry, just because it's such a narrow area. And I'm afraid if I try to put um, water on first, it's just going to run too much. And then here, I think this stem, I'm going to let it disappear behind that other leaf in front and then come out on the other side. So now I kind of have where it's, where it's at. Then I'm going to go in and get a darker green, dab, dab, just on the tip. And can you see now I'm just dabbing in just to try and get it a little darker on this darker side. And it would be darker underneath here. That's away from the light. So I'm coming in from here. Light's coming from up there. So while it's still damp is when I like to get this done because then it spreads by itself and I don't have to do it and it's even darker there so now I might go in and get a little bit more of that French ultramarine blue on the tip dab dab and let's see yeah I just wanted a little darker here because I want to say that it's away from the light a little bit in here and a little bit in here and you can see it's still damp so it, it spreads out I like when it does that because it makes it easier so for me. put water on the leaf to start with. Well, I put the light green color on is what I have on. That's why, and it's not quite dry yet. So that's why it's spreading in. Down here it was dry, and but so it the, gets kind of stripy. white leaf, you put water first and then the green color? 
Yeah, I did that on that one. So I vary it a little bit. And it's you, you probably have to experiment yourself with what method works best for you. So a little bit more darkness here, I feel. There. And just lift it out a little bit. Yeah, I kind of like it like that. Just a little highlight on there. And it's kind of nice if I can get a little bit, so go even a little bit more, if I can get a little bit of darker here because, you know, that's going to help bring out that leaf that's going over in front. Mm -hmm. So it's dark against light, light against dark. So it's kind of, you know, just have to see what happens on each individual one. Um, and probably I could darken here just a little bit. That's too much, but let's not panic just yet. Yeah. I just like to get a little bit of a variation. It's too much to stab out a little bit there. But can you see, <coughs> by, I, once we have a whole bunch of them painted and they're all a little different, I think it's going to read really nice and it's kind of like the light hits them and, you know, they're casting a little bit of shadow for each other and stuff. So when you're painting these here, you want to think about the source of light and you want to think about dark pushes back and light brings forward. Those are kind of like the, the rules, so to speak, that apply here, as in most, most things. And you know, you can actually use your yellow as your water, you know, to transport the pigment. That way you can kind of see better what you got. Of course, you have yellow under those greens. Once you have most of your painting painted, it's usually not a good idea, usually. I mean, there's exceptions to every rule, of course, but usually it's not a real good idea to go in and then all of a sudden start, you know, introducing new colors. Very often what happens is it just looks like, you know, two different paintings in one. So I finished painting the last um, little part of this um, painting uh, that I started in class with the little uh, snowbells. And I mean, it's not perfect, but um, so I painted on the leaves and you can see I got a little oopsie. I got some yellow down in the snow here that I don't really want. So I have several options. Um, this, the yellow is transparent yellow and it's quite staining. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Um, so, and I don't want to use a scrubber brush because I'm going to do the uh, cast shadows across. So I'm just going to take a piece of masking tape, whoops, um, and just kind of mask out the flowers so that I don't get into those. And then I took a piece of Mr. Clean and I'm going to dip him call him him, of course, you know, on the box it's a he, um, in some clean water, squeeze it out really, really well. I'm actually going to go on and squeeze it on my towel. Um, that's what I always do. And then I'm just going to see if I can get it out. So I'm just going to scrub back and forth here a little bit and dab. And I put a little bit of shadow down already, so that's probably going to come up too, but that's no big deal. I can put it back on again. And a little bit more there. And here. And so turn it over to a clean spot and get it out of there. I think I got it out pretty well. There we go. So there you can see. Much better, right? Don't have that bright yellow in the snow. We're going to take that back off. And then I have to wait for this to dry. And then the last thing I'm going to do is work a little bit on those shadows. And I'm going to splatter some white paint on the painting. It's not, you know, perfect, but I think it's good enough. And you can see I tried to vary the green, so I got a little bit of a darker 
green on those um, leaves that are going behind and things like that. So um, I'm happy enough with it. All right, I think it's dry. So um, let's just uh, get a little bit of that shadow color back on again. I want it to have a little bit on this area. So my shadow color is uh, cobalt blue and um, it's made a little bit more lavender with uh, some quinacridone red. You can also use a pink if you have a pink available. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that shadow color in here. And then lose the edge. There we go. Give it a little dip in the snow. There. And maybe just a little bit here. Oops. Don't want it so dark. And then back here. I think we can darken it a little bit back here. Again, not so much. Need to have a little bit more water on my brush. There. And lose the edge. And then a little bit in here at the bottom. Just to kind of push you into the picture. There we go. I think that'll work. And then, of course, that has to dry. And before I quit, I think I want to darken here even a little bit more so that it matches the other side. Light's coming from here. So I already got one of my cast shadows that I painted on earlier. So, can go over that. There. Just want to make sure I don't have any of those pesky ghost lines. And now I have to let that dry. But now I kind of think I like that better. So we'll let that dry. And then it's the cast shadows. And then I think we can wrap it up after we uh, spread a little white on it. Okay, so I got the yellow kind of taken care of with uh, Mr. Clean. And now all I want to do is put in uh, a little bit of those cast shadows um, underneath and so I'm just gonna catch these little guys and have them kind of run like this tie this in And here's these here also will run across here. And here. Just a little bit the dabbled shadows in here. Underneath here. little bit darker underneath and I think we're good just like that there we have it I'm not too concerned about having them you know be exactly the same just want a little something going on there I think that's good and uh, I might even give it a little bit of a spray with my dot bottle. And the dot bottle, if you haven't seen some of my other videos, this is a dot bottle where you can see there's a little dot behind the arrow. And um, it gives it a dot pattern instead of a, a fine mist. So that's what's special about a dot bottle. So I'm going to leave that like this. I might dab off just a little bit down here at the bottom because you know cast shadows they are a little lighter as they go away from the uh, subject matter that is casting the shadow. 
So let's just see. Is there any, any, anything? Maybe here a little bit like that. There. I should stop fiddling with that right now. And the last thing I want to do here is I'm going to spray on a little bit of white splatter. And I am going to use this um, aqua cover from Creative Mark. It's a liquid watercolor paper designed to cover Arches Bright White, which is what I'm painting on. So um, I'm just going to clean out an area on my little palette and put some in there and then I'm going to splatter. Alright, so I cleaned out an area in my palette and I'm going to get a little bit of this um, aqua cover on. It's very, very thick and it comes with a little thing like this and I'm just going to put a little bit on my palette here and so I just put it out here in one of my little mixing areas after it's cleaned off. I think that's enough. And I always am very careful that I don't get any of that um, in mixed in with my watercolors because you know I don't want them to be opaque and this is an opaque color. So here we have it. Put a little bit of water in since it's so thick. Can even spray in a little bit to thin it up just a little bit. There. And then take my toothbrush. Yeah, it's not the one I use old toothbrush and I just dipped it in water and then now I'm dabbing it off on my towel because you know I don't want it too wet and this is a bit of a messy process so I uh, want to make sure you don't get it on your clothes and then I put a little bit on the tip and then I'm just gonna run my fingers across I need to get a little bit more on we have it. And then again just get a little bit. There we have it. And I want a little bit of that down in the s snow also so it's not just up on top. Get a little bit more the toothbrush and then do a little bit more. And there. I'm going to call that good. And there's my little snowy painting. Maybe I'll do see if I can get a few more splatters if I do this. It's another way of doing it. There. Done. We're gonna say it's done. Hopefully I didn't get anything on myself. I think I'm good. So here's a fun little um, watercolor of some snowbells. And um, this is one way of doing it, and I can't remember if I already showed you, but you can also do it like this, where you do much uh, darker colors and put some salt in the background. I put salt in here, but here, you know, every time you do it, it's going to look a little different. And this way, you know, I didn't bother with any uh, foreground of snow or cast shadows because this is a different mood, so to speak. So they're a lot of fun to do, uh, these little uh, snowbell paintings. So. Have fun with that. Happy painting and see you in another YouTube video. If you haven't done so already, um, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Eva Nichols Art, and that way you get notified every time I uh, upload a new demo. So, see you later!